Programmer here at the Science Center. Welcome! We are so excited to have you guys here to share in our fun. Uh, before we get started though, we do have a very important message to share, so please listen closely. So, on stage, you're gonna see us doing some very exciting, dangerous demonstrations. Heidi and I have gone through lots of training. We're following all the safety procedures. We're using all the personal protective equipment that we need to use to make this safe. And so that means that what we're doing on stage, you should not be trying at home. No, 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 we're looking at you, dads. So while we're being safe on stage, we also need you guys to be safe in the audience as well. Of air out, it travels very far, and it's very efficient for blowing out candles. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try, oh, maybe I was already too good. One of the candles is already out. <laughs> Let me just try lighting another one. And we're gonna try and use this special uh, item and see what we can do. Okay, here we go. It's ready, steady. Oh, Not bad. A little bit of a ripple. That's awesome movement. All right, my turn. Let's try this. Oh, I got the. Oh, I got the first one. How did I do that? That's so weird. Okay, okay, your turn. All right, I'm gonna move a little closer, get a little bit of an advantage, and move all this air. Oh, okay. Let's hope this is the last one. Yeah! Woo! Woo! We're start we are on our way! Yeah, now we know who to call to blow out those candles. So this is oh, yeah. exactly the same principle, <laughs> just large. <laughs> and for this, we, we need our two pre-selected volunteers who told us they have steady aim. So it's tilted down just a tiny bit. There we go, and Pretty good. Okay, let's try that one over there to our left. Here we go. Uh -huh. And that one over here to our right. And maybe a couple into the audience. And one down the middle. Careful, guys. Careful. We don't want anybody to lose an eye. And how about one over there? And maybe one more right up the middle on the, into the light. Yeah! Fireball, but very quiet. So those are the two possibilities. And we just need you guys to use your skills and observation to figure out which one is which. Now before we even do that, do you think this is going to be loud? Yeah! So I'm going to need you guys to practice your safety and use your elephant ears. Take your hands, put them in front of your ears or covering your ears, definitely not behind your ears or in your ears, in order to protect yourself from the noise. Okay? So everyone, employ those elephant ears as we watch. That changes. 
in this experiment. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> all. Okay, you can see where this is going, right? You said that you trust in physics, and what we're going to do is we're going to use that bowling ball from the bowling alley, this 10 pound bowling ball. We're going to use it as a pendulum to demonstrate conservation of energy. And it's that idea that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but just change from one to another. So, if I hold this basketball at this level, it has low potential energy. If I hold it up here, that it has higher potential energy, right? And when I drop it, it changes from potential energy to kinetic energy. And so if I drop it from way up here, when I catch it, it's right here. So did it come back at the same level as it started at? No, it lost some energy in that conversion. It lost some energy due to friction with the air and with the ground. So can it ever bounce right back up to exactly where it started? No. No. And so that should make Annie feel a lot better because this bowling ball pendulum, when it comes over here, if I was to release it, is it going to come right back to exactly the same spot? No, not if the law of conservation of energy is correct, right? Perfect. So that makes it feel totally fine. We won't see any response. Up. Remember, you told us you trust with it. <laughs> All right, so let's bring it up nice and close to your nose there. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Keep an eye on her. So we did see a little bit of an increase in her sweat level on her fingertips as that bowling ball approached her head. But luckily, physics worked! Yay! And set this thing on fire, and you'll see, you will see how incredibly hazardous this stuff is. All right, you ready? You may want to cover your ears for this. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah! <laughs> Hydrogen peroxide, that's right. 
And like I said, this stuff is spectacular at the molecular level. I mean, that extra oxygen atom keeps wine to escape into the air and leave behind water, just plain H2O. But obviously, we can't see it, and of course, it's happening really, really slowly, but we can do something about that. That's right. We're going to do an experiment that speeds it up and makes it easier to see that oxygen. So I'm going to pour this into this larger reaction flask so it's easier for us to see. We're going to spread it all out. And then, in order to capture all that oxygen, we're going to use some soap. So I'd like you to use that soap, pour it, add some soap to it, and that soap film is going to capture the oxygen as it escapes, making lots and lots of bubbles. Uh -huh. And, of course, we want it to look good for our party, so let's add some food coloring. Yeah, add a couple drops so you have to start sort of shake it. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. It's gonna I'm gonna, so pretty. Yeah, I'm gonna mix it all up, and because the reaction is suddenly gonna start happening so quickly, I'm gonna put it over here, where it won't make such a mess. To speed it up, we are gonna add a catalyst, a different chemical. It's it's called potassium iodide. It doesn't react with the hydrogen peroxide, but it gives those oxygens a kickstart and speeds up their, their uh, escape from the hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so as soon as I add it, that kickstarter reaction should start. Observing that it looks hot, do you guys see steam escaping from this? Shall we put our hands up and see if we can feel some heat? I do feel a little bit of heat, but the gloves make it a bit difficult. Yeah. When the, this is called an exothermic reaction. So when the oxygen is really go, escaping fast, there's also a lot of heat released. Exo means out and thermic means heat. And so there's so much heat that the remaining water is turning to steam. And this is going to continue reacting until all that hydrogen peroxide is used up. All right, thank you so much, Jack. When you need to use your elevators again, but let's have a look at what we're going to be working with. And once again, let's use our observation skills. So would you agree this looks like water? No? No? Well, what's it's clear? It's colorless? It's liquid? No, it it's gas. It's boiling, but and water boils. But, and there's steam coming off it. Dry ice. Ah, it's not steam. You Dry ice. It is Nitrous super cold. cold. Look at that. That is actually frozen water droplets falling down because it is cold, rather than rising up because it is hot. And. And this stuff is so cold that look, it's actually producing frost on the outside of my beaker. Does anybody know what this is? Liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen, that's right. Everybody take a deep breath in and out. You just breathe in and out about 78% nitrogen gas from the air. You didn't need it. But um, it's it's there just the same, more than more than oxygen. And when it's a gas, it's pretty warm. But to make it a liquid, you have to cool it down to minus 196 degrees Celsius. Ooh, that is really cold. And what happens when it, it, it gets in contact with the air the room temperature air is it immediately starts to boil and the liquid becomes a gas. And what do we call that process? Eva, you, you do it. All right, so if in some alternate universe, I would have been allowed to give you some of this ni liquid nitrogen, which I actually wouldn't be able to do in real life, I would want to make sure that you are not going to spill it, because it is super cold and it can be dangerous. And of course, so I'm going to put it in a can with a very secure lid here. 
And I would also, as well, give you some advice on how to handle. Oh, knew it. Knew that. Uh -huh. I'm try that again. Um, because, as I said, it's super cold. So if it gets, uh, if there's any exposed flesh, it can actually cause <laughs> your skin cells to freeze. So you want to make sure that you're wearing the proper um, protective equipment. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was funny, but you get the idea. When that nitrogen turns to a gas, it actually expands up 700 times. It takes up 700 times more space than the liquid. So when I try to confine it in a small space, it's going to push against the walls and the lid, and that pressure will be enough, in this case, to pop the lid off the can. Do it again! Do it again! Heidi, so I want to know what would happen if I put it in a container that you couldn't just pop the lid off, like a screw cap container. Let me let me show you the container I want to use. Ooh, a power reaction flask. And you guys won't be able to see it once I put it in there, will you? No. So, it's going to release a lot of energy, but you won't be able to see it. How about, how about that one? So that should give us an indication of the power of the explosion. Great. And you know, this stuff is really cool. Um, and I'm sure if we just put it in there the way it is, that it would warm up enough. But is there anything we can do to sort of speed it along? You know, we're kind of on a, on a timeline here. I got you back. We, I have already added some room temperature and water and some water we heated up in a kettle before the show. And that is going to warm up our nitrogen way faster than, it, than without it. Perfect. Okay, so I have added the liquid nitrogen to the container. But before I cap it, some people were asking about whether this will be loud. This is going to be really loud. So I'm going to need you guys to prepare by using your elephant ears. I'm going to put on my protective equipment. I'm going to put the cap on and then I'm going to put it inside. Okay, are you ready? Ready. Okay. You don't know when this will be shut off, so keep those elephant ears. 